been a while since we last spoke, but I had reasons to not film any videos. I want to talk about this. I'm here to talk about this book, Relics by Sol Hudson. Sol Hudson is an interesting author in the British horror scene. Allegedly, he read The Rats by James Herbert, and he said, I can write this book better. Spoilers. He can't. And since his writing skills are not his strong point, the way for him to stick out of the pile is by being the most extreme edgelord in horror fiction. And when I say edgelord, I mean his books are way out there. I've read two more of his books in the past. I've read Erebus and Victims. I liked Erebus a lot because, come on, it's a book about cannibal cows. What's not to like in that book? And it was both out insane. And Victims, it was also kind of very violent and insane, but it didn't quite work. So I was curious about relics. Synopsis that sound interesting. There is an archaeological dig somewhere in England, and they stumble upon an underground tunnel that is full of uh, Celtic relics, like uh, the skeletons of children. And there are some tablets with writing they have to decipher and time is running out because there is a construction site next to the, the dig and the developer wants to expand the archaeological dig so they're not able to discover the mysteries of the place and a lot of accidents start to happen and people working on the buildings are getting horrifically murdered by something that's monstrous and they're found in various pieces and also there are some subplots about some satanists who are also heroin addicts and a guy doing dog fights. So yeah, there is plenty of gore in this book. This book is, it doesn't waste a lot of time on the mystery, on the archaeological site and on the characters. It's just um, every second chapter, it's either somebody getting nailed, metaphorically, or literally. And there is a lot of gruesome kills. One of the kills in the book was kind of imaginative and interesting, but the rest of them, there was also uh, the writing, did not help a lot. It was kind of undercooked. There were a lot of gore, of course, some crazy gore. It feels like a Lucio Fulci movie. The way that the plot is just there to facilitate a lot of gory set pieces and some sleazy parts. And that's kind of the problem of the book. You know, when you have uh, too much of a good thing, it's a bad thing. It actually took me two weeks to read this book, and it's very sleek. So yeah, that's that's a lot of time. Um, yes, I was bored reading this book. I was reading a book about horrific murders, and I was bored. That's that's a huge red flag. So while uh, I was reading, and people came into the book, and they were uh, ending up in pieces, I couldn't quite understand who was who which is not a good sign. Uh, it means that the plot and the characters are not well defined. The plot is all over the place. The subplots are just there. And you try to think how they, do they fit into together, but they don't. Maybe as red herrings, but not quite. They never come together until, of course, uh, things happen. They get resolved in parallel to the main plot. And there is a huge twist towards the end that also doesn't work for me. The way the book ends, yes, it's grim and dark and one of those endings I usually do like, but doesn't work in this book because it's half-cooked, it's half-baked. Victims was like that too. Erebus don't care about the plot. If they're cannibal cows, I like the book. <laughs> I'm a simple man. But here there is some sort of a whodunit who is never properly resolved, I guess. Or it's, um, you know, there's a detective and it's a police inspector who's trying to find out who's killing those people and he's stumbling around the plot and one of the archaeologists is maybe somewhat explored but uh, the whole archaeological dig is just there in the background and you know that there is something supernatural happening with the murders and the dig is important and you get some clues about what's happening, some hints, but there's all the progression of hints, it's just things happen and then they get resolved at the end. So that's always something very bad with a whodunit, even when you read a trash horror book, and that's trash horror, okay? It's a British trash horror from 1987, so yeah, it's way too deep into 
the nasties era, even when you read a trashy horror, there should be some escalation. There should be some uh, questions posed and answered and the plot working. And here, there are just some plot elements and they progress and they get resolved somehow and the book ends. And this doesn't help. There are no, there's not a flow of questions and answers. So yes, that's not good. Now, the kills, they're too much. They, I mean, every kill is dial up 10. And when everything is dialed up to 10, they kind of feel the same. Uh, there is this uh, sour scene that I thought, oh, that's original and that was pretty gruesome. But yeah, that was a uh, drop in the ocean of blood and gore. If I want to talk about a movie, it reminds me of The Beyond by Lucio Fulci, uh, where, yes, there is an ancient evil being unleashed and people start dying in mysterious ways. One of the kills, one of the early kills, Feels a lot like the morgue scene for Beyond, you know, the sour kill, the set the set piece, the way it's set up, remind me of Argento's Tenebra. So, there were movies that came around the same time, so there was clearly some inspiration from them. The book fails to capture their appeal. The Beyond feels, has no blood, right? Things happen, that's all. But they don't happen because the creator is a try-hard edge lord, like Sean Hudson is. They happen because he has a vision. He is trying to paint a picture of bleakness, and you get that. The, the kills are kind of over the top, but they're presented in an inventive way. Here, the kills are just described like you would describe watching them in a movie which is not that great. And yes, eyes are involved in a lot of them. So there is definitely a very fulsy uh, aspect to it, but not the artistry of presenting those things. And Tenebra, of course, is an awesome crime mystery with a lot of red herrings, creators and answers, and a great twist. I won't spoil it here, you should watch this movie. I mean, you should watch all the 70s and 80s of the movies, they're great uh, whodunits except for Spirit and Inferno. But yes, the great whodunits, they do understand that crime mystery and you have to give clues and have an interesting twist and maybe break some of the tropes of the genre and use them as ways to elevate us. And yes, there is ultra violence, but it's there because it's fun, I guess. Very gruesome kills, not as extreme as here. But here it's just, you know, a lot of extreme kills and a big twist in the end, but never quite works. It feels a lot like uh, Sean Hudson watched a horror movie, like The Beyond, and just wrote a past draft of what he saw, or maybe it's an early script for a proposed movie, which is too long to be a movie, I guess. There are way too much things happening, so yes, I guess it's a very big movie, and maybe things will cut in the editing, but you get the idea. It feels like a trash horror movie from the 80s. Um, some of the things you would see in an episode of The Horror Geek with commentary track and corny lines and corny jokes because the movie won't be very good. You know what? I'm, I'm in a horror rut. I want to read a good trash horror book and enjoy it all year long. I just can't find one to read. <laughs> I mean, it started with the rats and I had a review for the rats and the rats was quite good for a trash horror book, and then I read some other books that were not good for trash horror books, they were uh, boring, trashy. I had a great host for the cats, he watched the review, and it was boring and trashy. This book is boring, and uh, it's not even trashy, you know, it's when you make it intentionally trash. Well, and it's try hard, and that's not fun. You know, it's like, yes, I saw them. There is more gore per page than my contemporaries. I'm such a great author, and he's not. I mean, even the, the premise is very boring, and it doesn't go in any extreme way. It's just there, and there's a lot of gore happening. That is not fun. So, yeah, that's another miss. Not this book.